Now, Mr. Speaker, on page 8 here, section 7, it says here, public access to information on the sex offender register. Now, that is very important to me. I highlighted it here. Why? I ask why, Mr. Attorney General. The police already have information on who all the sex offenders are, you know. So why? Listen to me carefully, Andrew. Because when we get to committee stage, I'm going to explain this here. Why are you only giving the police that information? It says here, public access to information in the sex offender register. A person may apply to the commission of police for confirmation of whether a named individual is registered. Why is that? No, it is not fine. No, let me explain. An application to the commission of police shall be in the form as set out in Schedule 3. You have to go through a process to get the information. The persons who may be made privy to the information on the register include, but shall not be limited to, listen here, principals and managers of schools, child care facilities, and so on, managers of facilities for the vulnerable persons, persons who have received written authorization from the commission of police, and the person commits an offense and is liable to three years imprisonment and $10,000 fine if they get this information and circulate it. Mr. Attorney General, how does that protect the public? If I live in a neighborhood and some magical person lives next to me, or a spineless creature lives next to me, I don't have no information unless I go through this process to get information from police. No, we're in the Constitution. No, it's not. It is not. No, it is not. The police already know who the offenders are. Why limit the information only to the... The reason why we're creating this registry... Listen to, listen carefully. The reason why we're creating this registry is to protect the public. So why keep the information from the public? It makes no sense. It makes no sense. The act, this act, <laughs> is not being made to protect the offenders and the, and the pedophiles. This act is being made to protect children and women. You're not violating their rights. They are not, you're not violating any right that they have. They commit a crime. Yes. This act, this act is meant to be a deterrent. This act allows parents to be proactive in taking care of their children. This act also allows the community to support our children. You stop protecting the pedophiles. Stop doing it. Stop it. That's good. But we have in our community, I have in my community. Let me tell you now, Mr. Mr. Member for Barbuda, the danger of what the, the, the whole point of this, you know, is the danger they pose to the community. You cannot keep the information from the community. It makes no sense. But we know who the murderers are. A lot of murders are not solved. Well, if we don't know the case, how are we going to do it? Yeah, that, listen, hush. You're, you're embarrassing yourself. You don't know what you say. Okay, you don't know what you say. This here, see, this is this is a bill. This is a bill to protect our women and children from abusers. You cannot set up a registry and keep the registry away from the public. It would make no you defeat the whole purpose of having the registry in the first place. We point it out to us. We are going to go into committee stage. Point it out to us where it says that. That's all I'm asking. This is a tool for monitoring offenders. This is not this this um, offenders registry. 
and it should be publicly accessible and should be regularly updated. The public has a right to know. This here will increase public safety by reducing the incentive to commit sexual offenses. We don't want this thing to be covered up and be hidden anymore. Cannot happen. So this is a useful instrument for targeting offenders and monitoring known offenders. It arms residents with information to protect themselves and their children. Community members, especially parents, can know of sex offenders in their community. Why you want to hide this information? Why are you going to come to Parliament, create this registry, and then hide it from people? Huh? No way, man. We have to be more transparent than that. Subject the offenders to scrutiny. <coughs> I don't see how it hurts the public to put this information out there. It should be on the internet. And I tell you, in many countries across the world, in the United States especially, it is available online. You can go on the line and get the information. Yes. I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. Everything we don't do everything that Remember for Bob, you know, you're gonna you're gonna be debating as well, isn't it? Okay. <clears throat> now I'm just saying that they do it because they have them there and they seek to protect their communities. So let us do the same thing. Any person convicted of a criminal offense against a victim who is a minor, who is convicted of any sexual violent offenses, or who is a sexually violent predator, should be required to register as a sex offender. The other day, yes, it's right in the act. I'm agreeing with you. That's the only point that they point out that I don't agree with this building. Part that we want to keep it private. No, sir, you're not going to keep nothing private. I want to know of that possibility, especially if that person is in close proximity to my family and my community or my constituents. It is important to recognize these crimes have long lasting effect. And this is about protecting victims of sexual offenses. <laughs> no matter how minor you might think the crime is. That is not covered up anymore. And I could say a lot more in here, you know, about certain things that I know about.